Imagine for a moment that you are alone at a distance of hundreds of kilometers from the Earth and suddenly you see some strange thing that cannot be explained. Most times it's blamed on the fact that you were hallucinating, but deep down, you know what you saw. Yes, astronauts are brave people. They set out to meet the endless mystery known as space, not knowing what awaits them on the other side. They only have a mission, but sometimes unplanned and unimaginable things can't help but occur. From space snakes to series of UFO sightings, here are 20 creepiest things seen by astronauts in space. Number 20. Fireflies The 95-year-old ex-astronaut and U.S. Senator was the last living member of the original Mercury 7 crew of test pilots turned astronauts. On February 20, 1962, Glenn became the third American in space following colleagues Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom who went to space on separate but brief missions in 1961. That aside, if you have seen the 1983 space race epic, The Right Stuff, you might remember the scene with Mercury 7 astronaut John Glenn, played by Ed Harris, seeing fireflies outside the Friendship 7 as he made three passes around the big blue marble. But in real life, Glenn stared in awe at the glowing bits, while Mission Control was worried that it was pieces of the capsule's heat shield disintegrating, possibly dooming the Marine to be the first man to die in space. After all, he was reaching speeds of nearly 17,000 miles per hour. From a radio transcript of Glenn's mission, he had mentioned they were small, round, and beautifully luminescent, almost as if they were just imagined by Glenn. Fortunately, it was confirmed as a colleague named Scott had gone on the same mission on the same capsule. NASA scientists had deduced they were really just illuminated frost flakes that had accumulated on the outside of the capsule as it burst out of the Earth's grasp and began to fall away looking like what could be fireflies to the untrained human eye. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. That takes us to today's video's strange topic. For many wannabe astronauts, the idea of entering into the great unknown would be a dream come true, but over the past 50 years, there's been a slew of spaceflight related tragedies that are more akin to the astronauts' worst nightmare. In the last half century, about 30 astronauts and cosmonauts have died while training for or attempting dangerous space missions, but the vast majority of these deaths occurred either on the ground or in Earth's atmosphere below the accepted boundary of space called the Kármán Line, which begins at an altitude of about 100 kilometers. However, of the roughly 550 people who have so far ventured into space, very few of them have actually died there, and it is believed that sometimes they're left in space so occasionally astronauts would run up to these bodies. Quite creepy, isn't it? Comment down below with the hashtag strange topic and let us know what you think about this. That being said, let's move on. Number 19. Alien Snake There have been reports of more than 10% of the UK public believing that they've seen a UFO. All across the world, year after year, sightings and reports of unidentified aerial phenomena flood the web. Whether it's experimental aircraft or extraterrestrials, no one knows for sure. However, the most damning accounts come from the experts. While there are conspiracy theories over what Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin saw on the moon, Franklin Story Musgrave once spoke of an eight-foot snake out there in space, which he couldn't fully explain. According to him, the more you fly in space, the more you see an incredible number of things out there, and that sort of brings to you. Really a certainty that other living creatures are out there. Some are incredibly primitive, more primitive, and some could just be proteins coming together, amino acids, and some just single-cell organisms and other civilizations that have been around for a million years that are doing unimaginable kinds of things. In an interview with Omni magazine, Musgrave also spoke of the same snake, claiming to have seen and photographed what he calls the snake. In the photographed evidence, the so-called snake appears to be a seven-foot eel swimming out there. However, Musgrave did concede that it may be an uncritical rubber seal from the main engines, but can never be too sure. Musgrave had also mentioned that the living creatures he believes inhabit space are far more developed than civilizations. He even goes the extra mile to sometimes try to communicate or ask them to come at him, even though the probabilities of that happening are almost non-existent. 
Number 18. Floating Human It sounds like a scene from science fiction, where a lone figure is cast off from the space station, getting smaller and smaller as it drifts out into the empty space. In this case, no human was actually at risk when the crew members aboard the International Space Station tossed a worn-out spacesuit over the side. It was empty except for an interesting amateur radio experiment. This empty spacesuit became an orbital experiment in 2006. Using a simple police scanner or ham radio, you can listen to a disembodied spacesuit circulating Earth. ISS astronaut Mike Fink spacewalks in a Russian Orlin spacesuit. According to Frank Bauer of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, suit set is a Russian brainstorm. The idea was from his Russian partners in the program, presumably a group led by a Sergei Sam Urov who had suggested they could turn an old spacesuit into a useful satellite, and the suit set is the first test of that idea. They had equipped a Russian Orlin spacesuit with three batteries, a radio transmitter, and internal sensors to measure temperature and battery power. Unlike a normal spacewalk, with a human inside the suit, suit set's temperature controls will be turned off to conserve power. The suit, arms and legs akimbo, possibly spinning, will be exposed to the fierce rays of the sun with no way to regulate its internal temperature. The question now that keeps the astronaut wondering, will the suit overheat? How long will the batteries last? Can we get a clear transmission if the suit tumbles? These are some of the questions the suit set will answer, laying the groundwork for suit sets of the future. Number 17. Happy Face Mars after multiple attempts to image the Cydonia region from April 2004 until July 2006, frustrated by altitude and atmospheric dust and haze, the high-resolution stereo camera on board Mars Express finally obtained on 22 July a series of images that show the famous face on Mars in unprecedented detail. The data were gathered over the Cydonia region, and these images of the Cydonia region on Mars are truly spectacular. They not only provide a completely fresh and detailed view of an area famous to fans of space myths worldwide, but also provide an impressive close-up over an area of great interest for planetary geologists, and show once more the high capability of the Mars Express camera. Cydonia is located in the Arabia Terra region on Mars and belongs to the transition zone between the southern highlands and the northern plains of Mars. This transition is characterized by wide, debris-filled valleys and isolated remnant mounds of various shapes and sizes. And one of these visible remnant massives became famous as the face on Mars in an image taken on 22 July 1976 by the American Viking 1 orbiter. A few days later, on 31 July 1976, a NASA press release claimed that the formation resembles a human head. However, NASA scientists had already correctly interpreted the image as an optical illusion caused by the illumination angle of the sun. The formation surface morphology and the resulting shadows giving the impression of eyes, nose, and mouth. Nonetheless, the face on Mars was the subject of widespread speculation on the possible origins and purpose of artificial structures on the red planet with the face being the most talked about formation. Number 16. UFO Sightings Cosmonaut Musa Manarov claimed that this happened during a visit mission in 1991 when all their attention was focused on the slowly approaching space capsule. He was close to the great porthole from where he could see their approaching visitors. Manarov watched everything very carefully, and when the capsule came closer, he quickly started to film it with a professional beta cam camera. He had claimed that he noted something below the spaceship which first looked like a kind of antenna, but on looking closely and analyzing the situation, he realized that there was no antenna at all. He had first thought it was part of the construction, but then this element started to move away from the ship so he quickly alerted the others. With all his experience, especially with docking maneuvers in space, Manarov could tell that especially in this phase simply nothing can break off at all, and if something would have been loose, it would have been torn off long before. During the launch, the maneuvers, the turn, all these much more energetic flight phases. The object was quite far away, in any case at least 300 feet as assumed since Manarov said it was the distance of the space capsule, but he had the impression that it was beyond it. It's possible that it was a kind of UFO. No one could say with any certainty what it was. It was definitely not a bigger piece of space junk, no rocket part or so, since this would have been located. But when space surveillance tried to locate them, according to them, there was nothing. Number 15. Dancing Fairies The sight of the entire Earth, visible to the naked eye, has had a profound effect on those who have seen it. 
Astronaut William McCool described it as beyond imagination, and many have written how spaceflight permanently altered how they saw their place in the universe. For mission control, the wonder of space must seem like something of a distraction as they focus on the psychological health of their astronauts working in a high-pressure, high-risk environment, at least 420 kilometers above the Earth's surface. These day-to-day -day stresses can be equally as life-changing and NASA considers behavioral and psychiatric conditions to be one of the most significant risks to the integrity of the mission, not least as there is no significant evidence that space travel has mind-altering effects. One of the most common experiences of the mind-altering effect inflicted by the stress accompanied by space travels has proven to be frequent hallucinations that, despite sounding ominous, are probably the least concerning when it comes to in-orbit mental health. In the early Apollo missions, astronauts reported regular flashes or streaks of light that seemed to come out of nowhere. During a 2012 mission on the International Space Station, astronaut Don Petit described these experiences as flashes in his eyes, like luminous dancing fairies that could be overlooked during work but would appear strongly in the dark confines of one's sleep station with the droopy eyelids of pending sleep. These flashes attracted significant scientific attention, and a series of experiments determined that they are caused by cosmic rays, which can be easily explained as free-moving subatomic particles from distant destructing stars. On Earth, most particles are absorbed by the atmosphere, but in space, they cause nerve cells in the visual system to produce the dancing fairy effect. Number 14. Another UFO Sighting on the second day of the Gemini 4 mission in June 1965 over Hawaii, while White was asleep, McDivitt happened to see an unidentified flying object, UFO, which he described as looking like a beer can or a pop can, and with a little thing like maybe a pencil or something sticking out of it. He had taken a few photographs of it but did not have time to properly set exposure or focus properly. He believes that since it was visible to him, it must have been in an orbit close to that of his spacecraft, probably a piece of ice or multi-layer insulation that had broken off. Word of the UFO photos reached the press by the time the flight splashed down, and one eager reporter waited for the Gemini 4 photos to be processed. He found one with a cluster of three or four images that looked like disc-shaped objects with tails, which became known as the tadpole photo but McDivitt had identified these as reflections of bolts in the multiplane windows. Mercury 7 astronaut Gordon Cooper wrote in his memoir that it was the only official reported account of a UFO in any of the Mercury, Gemini, or Apollo missions. Journalists speculated that it could have been a spy satellite, but these speculations were debunked when the space surveillance confirmed that there were no satellites at that moment. After the Gemini capsule had landed, McDivitt photographs were retrieved and had taken at least four days to process. The shocking thing is that when they had retrieved the images, McDivitt claimed that they were not of the objects he witnessed. To this day, it is not known what McDivitt had witnessed. Number 13. The Orange Glow When ESA astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti started her approach to the International Space Station for the first time, Nothing could have prepared her for what she was about to see. As she peered out of the side window of the Soyuz spacecraft, she witnessed something that only a few astronauts have ever glimpsed, the moment that the sun catches the solar panels on the ISS as night turns to day. The result is an encompassing red glow that, as you can see from this video, is so powerful it bathes the Soyuz in a deep blood orange color. It's hard to imagine what that sight must have been like, but in her first blog post, Krista Ferretti does her best to put the moment into words, saying, that the enormous solar panels were inundated with a blaze of orange light, vivid, warm, almost alien. She couldn't help but exclaim something out loud, which could be heard in the recordings of their docking. At first, the exclamation was taken that she must have seen something at that moment, but when she had immediately cleared the doubt was after explaining what she had actually witnessed. Anyway, given the fact she had claimed it to be almost alien, Krista Ferretti's comments have been naturally taken literally with every other UFO sightings daily among others now reporting that the Italian astronaut had, in fact, witnessed an alien craft welcoming the astronaut to the ISS. Of course, the more likely reason is that she simply became overwhelmed at the sight and described it in the only way she could, as alien, as something that was not of this Earth. But to be honest, the only thing I'm curious about is seeing what she saw, whether it was aliens or not. Number 12. Space music. Did Apollo 11 astronauts hear alien music coming from outer space when they orbited the moon in 1969? 
Despite what you may have heard on social media or seen from the trailer for a certain TV show, the answer is no. While it is true that the Apollo 11 astronauts heard strange whistling sounds that, at the time, they described as outer space type music, there is a very simple, non-alien explanation for what the crew members were hearing, and it's been public knowledge since the 1970s. In the audio recordings from the Apollo 10 mission, which you could be heard in a video from Space.com, astronaut Gene Cernan, who was piloting the lunar module, asked John Young, who was piloting the command module, if he hears that whistling sound. It was Cernan who calls it music and said it even sounds outer spacey. Later, the two men ask Tom Stafford, who was in the lunar module with Cernan, if he hears it too. They agree that it's really weird and Young says they're going to have to find out about it since nobody would believe them. To clear the air on the whistling sound, it turned out it was nothing more than interference between the VHF radios on the two different vehicles. Number 11. Gordon Cooper's UFO Encounter Gordon Cooper claimed to have seen his first UFO while flying over West Germany in 1951. Although he denied reports, he had seen a UFO during his Mercury flight. Why? Let's get down to it. Gordon Cooper is an American astronaut who participated in the Mercury 9 and Gemini 5 missions. He became the last American to be sent into space alone, but he also saw UFOs in space on more than one occasion. In 1951, while flying with the Air Force, he and other pilots witnessed a huge armada of UFOs flying at extremely high altitudes. This was the first such meeting for Cooper. Twelve years later, in May 1963, Cooper went into space aboard the Mercury capsule. In its final orbit, he noticed a glowing green object approaching at high speed. The object was real, at least to the Muchia tracking station in Western Australia, which saw it on the radar. Cooper reported the incident, but when he landed, he was told that he could not talk about this object. Number 10. Golden Spheres on May 5, 1981, hero of the Soviet Union, pilot cosmonaut Major General Vladimir Kovalenok looked out of the window of the Salyut orbital space station. While traveling through the station, he witnessed something inexplicable. Unlike American astronauts, Kovalenok spoke openly about what he saw at a press conference in Moscow when he returned to Earth. At the time it happened, they were over the South African region heading towards the Indian Ocean. According to him, he had just made some gymnastic exercises when he saw in front of him, through a porthole, an object that he could not explain. He saw this object and then something happened that he could not explain. Something impossible according to the laws of physics. Vladimir mentioned that the object was elliptical. From the side, it seemed as if it was rotating in the direction of flight. After that, there was a kind of explosion of golden light. Then, after one or two seconds, there was a second explosion somewhere else and two spheres appeared golden and very beautiful. And after this explosion, he saw white smoke before they entered the darkness. They flew through the twilight zone between day and night, moving eastward. And when they entered the darkness of the Earth's shadow, he could see them no more. Number 9. Spatula On July 15, 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft completed its nine-year journey to Pluto, becoming the first spacecraft to visit the system. But in the days before that, NASA would probably not be celebrating another momentous milestone in space history. That time on July 12, 2006, when astronaut Piers Sellers accidentally lost a spatula in space while testing out heat tile putty. It was not the first tool lost in space, nor will it be the last. But this is your reminder that a spatula once became an astronaut which should put your boring earthbound kitchen utensils to shame. The story checks out with that of November 18, 2008, when astronaut Heidi Marie Stefanischen Piper lost a tool bag in space after discovering that a grease gun had malfunctioned in the bag and trying to correct the error. According to N2YO.com, the bag re-entered orbit on August 3, 2008. The tool bag incidentally also had two spatulas inside it proving that there may be a conspiracy to deorbit all putty knives from near-Earth space. Number 8. Screaming Witch Head Nebula It may look wicked, but a stunning, if not scary, new view of the Witch Nebula unveiled by NASA for Halloween is actually the home of baby stars just beginning their cosmic lives. The image taken by NASA's now-retired WISE Infrared Space Telescope shows a nebula that bears an uncanny resemblance to a wicked witch in profile, hence its name. NASA featured the image as its space photo of the day to mark Halloween on October 31, 2013. 
noting that the Nebula Witch appears to be screaming out in space. It may look wicked, but a stunning if not scary. But of course, there are many nebulas in space with a Halloween twist. The Witch's Broom Nebula, which is part of the Veil Nebula, 1500 light years from Earth, is an obvious association. But there are also nebulas named after wizards and others that resemble ghosts or even a scary flaming skull. Number 7. Spotting Five Strange Lights the space station currently serves as a microgravity and space environment research laboratory for astronauts in space and was a joint project between NASA, Roscosmos, JAXA, ESA, and CSA, and cost more than 150 billion pounds when it was launched in 1998. The space agencies carry out various experiments on board the satellite as well as occasionally heading outside for a spacewalk. But in 2005, during his last mission for NASA, Dr. Leroy Chiao had a bizarre experience that left him both shocked and confused. Astronaut Leroy Chiao, who was commander of the International Space Station for six and a half months in 2005, had a jaw-dropping experience in outer space. On a spacewalk 230 miles above Earth, traveling at over 17,000 miles per hour, Chiao suddenly saw something that made his heart leap up into his throat. In an interview with the Huffington Post, and he saw them fly by and thought it was awfully strange, Chiao had a feeling that he was visited by aliens. He did mention that he doesn't rule it out 100%. He simply wants to believe that there are other lives in the universe. Number 6. Cassidy's Unidentified Flying Object Encounter NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy alerted ground controllers on Monday to an unidentified flying object floating near the International Space Station, but this was no alien spacecraft. Sorry to disappoint you, but instead, it was a piece of the station itself. Russian ground controllers identified it as an antenna cover from the Zvezda service module, one of the oldest parts of the station. The sighting merited just a brief mention in NASA's latest space station status report, plus a short clip on NASA's YouTube channel. Because the antenna cover's speed in relation to the rest of the station was so low, it didn't pose that much of a collision hazard. But controllers were glad to see the debris fade off into the distance, though this wasn't the first station debris to cause a UFO stir. Back in 1998, during the shuttle Endeavour's mission to hook the US-built Unity connecting node to the Russian-made Zvezda module, astronauts spotted a blobby object floating away from the scene. NASA determined that the object was a discarded thermal cover, but that didn't stop UFO fans from working the material into their tale of a mysterious Black Knight satellite that has been circling our planet for millennia. Number 5. Black Holes don't let the name fool you. A black hole is anything but empty space. Rather, it is a great amount of matter packed into a very small area. Think of a star 10 times more massive than the sun squeezed into a sphere approximately the diameter of New York City. The result is a gravitational field so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. In recent years, NASA instruments have painted a new picture of these strange objects that are, to many, the most fascinating objects in space. The idea of an object in space so massive and dense that light could not escape it has been around for centuries. Most famously, black holes were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, which showed that when a massive star dies, it leaves behind a small, dense remnant core. And if the core's mass is more than about three times the mass of the sun, the equation showed that the force of gravity overwhelms all other forces and produces a black hole. NASA had launched a swift telescope in December 2004 which observed the powerful, fleeting flashes of light known as gamma ray bursts. Chandra and NASA's Hubble Space Telescope later collected data from the event's afterglow, and together the observations led astronomers to conclude that powerful explosions can result when a black hole and a neutron star collide, producing another black hole. Number 4. Knocking Sound in Space Imagine you're alone in a tiny spacecraft. Let's say it's your first time up there. All alone in endless space, then suddenly you hear a knocking sound. Well, that's what happened to Yang Liwei, China's first man in space, on his maiden flight in 2003. In an interview, he had recalled hearing someone or possibly something knocking on the body of the spaceship just as knocking on an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. According to him, it neither came from outside nor inside the spaceship. Now, it's natural to get a bit nervous, which he did before having a peek out the porthole but failed to spot any explanation for the eerie knock. 
He has not been able to figure out what it was, neither up in space nor after returning to Earth. He had even tried, but failed, to recreate the sound so that experts could help him identify whatever it may have been. Unsurprisingly, the story about the unexplained mystery sounds in space has garnered quite a bit of attention. And while it's not that unusual to hear sound in space, and it's also not unusual to not find a conclusive explanation for that sound. However, what or who was knocking on Mr. Yang's spacecraft as he was all alone miles from the safety of the Earth remains unknown. Number 3. Ghost Hand of God I'm guessing we can all see the shape of a hand in this new x-ray image. The hand might look like an x-ray from the doctor's office, but it's actually a cloud of material ejected from a star that exploded. NASA's Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, or NUSTAR, has imaged the structure in high-energy x-rays for the first time, shown in blue. Lower-energy x-ray light previously detected by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory is shown in green and red. Nicknamed the Hand of God, this object is called the Pulsar Wind Nebula. It's powered by the leftover dense core of a star that blew up in a supernova explosion. The stellar corpse, called PSR B1509-58 or B1509 for short, is a pulsar. It rapidly spins around, seven times per second, firing out a particle wind into the material around it, material that was ejected in the star's explosion. These particles are interacting with magnetic fields around the material, causing it to glow with x-rays. The result is a cloud that, in previous images, looked like an open hand. The pulsar itself can't be seen in this picture but is located near the bright white spot. Number 2. Fire Without a Flame There are plenty of stories about strange phenomena occurring in space, but the observation of a new type of flame on board ISS was a truly bizarre moment and one that set off a flurry of excitement and research. From 2009 to 2012, astronauts lit things on fire in space. Not because they were all pyromaniacs, but because they wanted to know how fire behaved in the cosmos. They discovered that fire burns at a lower temperature and with less oxygen and can also burn without a flame in microgravity. Foreman Williams, the project leader on the experiments, had told Space.com that thus far, the most surprising thing that they've observed is the continued apparent burning of heptane droplets after flame extinction under certain conditions. Currently, this is entirely unexplained. Comment down below on what you think about this crazy phenomenon. Number 1. Glass Domes on the Moon Richard C. Hoagland, a proponent of alternate space theories, believed that Alan Bean saw glass domes from a long-extinct alien civilization on the moon. In an interview, Bean described space as looking like black patent leather shoes from the surface of the moon. Hoagland maintained, space should be velvet black, it should be inky black, it should be infinity, unending, deep, endless black, it shouldn't be shiny. And the only explanation for Bean's description, Hoagland concluded, was that he was seeing space through the reflection of a glass dome. That's all for 20 creepiest things seen by astronauts in space. Be sure to let us know what you think about those strange sightings which you think might just be true. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.